Aaron play at all um, in this uh, in today um, at all because um, it's either the team banned out the Baron or you know it isn't picked at all. It's just left alone. Um, a lot of teams here just do not want to play against it or just do not want to pick it up at all because Baron goes down to a lot of the micro skills um, required um, of any hero because firstly it's your positioning and if you are placed wrongly, if you're in the wrong position at the wrong timing, then you're easily bursted down because the general consensus for building Baron is that you do not go for any form of defense at all. So I'm not surprised if Popeyes would actually go for the first Baron band out and then as usual pick out Fox as a response to that ban. Um, as for impunity... Firstly, oh. Bernard Manuel, they're going to run away the Catherine. So they saw Catherine in the last game being extremely helpful to um, landing those most pursuits. And with the Echo, you basically force... You're going to guarantee a silence if, um, if Catherine's anywhere near you. Because she just does the one Echo to bait out the Crucible. And unless you have another crucible, you're gonna get silenced. Um, at least the captain will be silenced. And generally, she gets the carries as well because they want to block um, at the spoldrons and stuns as opposed to just blocking the silence. Baron band away. Yeah, you don't. Again, we're not. We're. I'm very unlikely to see Baron at all because he's so strong. Um, even though there are counters, it's so, it's so hard to play the counters correctly, and it's so much easier to play a Baron well that you're just putting yourself at an unnecessary disadvantage. I think they'll probably pick up Lyra, but as you said, they, they like to pick up Fox first. So they're worried it'll be banned away from them or it'll be picked up against them. So that would also make a lot of sense. Yep, definitely. I mean, we, we do actually see a Vox being picked up on the side of Popeyes, which which quite, which is like, which has been like quite the pattern uh, we've seen so far when Popeyes ban whatever they need to ban, um, especially that of Baron, and then they actually just do pick up that Fox as a priority pick for the side of Popeyes. I think it's really just down to the side that, you know, Popeyes do not have, or rather Aeon 222 do not have that fast hero pool needed because apparently, and it's quite apparent actually, that uh, Idris in the late game just counters Vox to the floor, and yet, Idris is not prioritized over that of Vox, but Vox is always and constantly first pick on the side of Popeyes. Yeah, and Infamous agree with me that Idris is a great counter to Vox, so they pick it up now to make sure it's not banned away. I've got a feeling that Popeyes' plan there was pick the Vox, they're not going to first pick Idris, we'll ban it away, uh, second ban, we'll be fine. And then of course they do first pick it because you're going to pick your carry, okay, I'll pick mine to counter you. And Lyra should be banned, they're actually going to ban away Samuel. Samuel's so good at kiting away from Idris he's probably the hit best hero at kite in the game and so they ban that away because Idris has a, has a hard time getting on top of Samuel yep. and yeah I think they I think they they might pick try and pick up Lyra with the Idris now instead of banging, banning it away well, yeah, definitely. But then one uh, one of the bans I was expecting from the side of Impunity is actually that of Koshka. I mean, just look at a previous game KDA. Koshka did not have the best KDA available to, you know, a, a Koshka as compared to when, when uh, Chingy first played Koshka today. Um, the problem was that uh, Koshka allowed and set up so many chances uh, for um, Aeon... Um, uh, Vox, uh, Aeon on this Vox actually pick up so many kills. So, banning out Castro, then you give Lyra over to the side of Impunity. Um, quarter four on this Lyra is just really, really scary. I, I mean, we saw how um, Catherine Ross played from quarter four um, in the previous matchup, and, and the, the amount of utility that, that you know Catherine brought to the game was just insane. Uh, much less if quarter four is going to be placed on this Lyra itself. Yeah, definitely. He's just He knows how to build the... Um... How to build Lyra to get as much heal as possible because uh, um, you just got to build health and it's all about getting those. Okay. Yeah. Quickly enough so that your heal does the massive bacteria. Uh huh. So anyways, um, like like said, um, draft restarted, but then on the side of Impunity, there's an Idris and a Lara pickup. So in response to that, I actually hope to see a Glaive, just for the early game uh, potential, the gank potential, like, and also Chingy playing an excellent Glaive um, in, in the previous game. So we actually do see a Grace in response to that Lara, and, and that makes quite a lot of sense, actually, because, I mean, although Grace's... Um, 
Grace's um, healing isn't as substantial as that of Lyra. Um, but in the later game, when you just build a little crystal power, like you said, um, it can go all the way up to 1.4. And with the Catherine band out, you know, with one of the biggest uh, Grace's counter on the foes, and that is Catherine being banned out, then I'm not surprised Grace is being picked out and in response to the, um, the Lyra, um, another healing hero like Lyra. I'd like to see attacker picked up here to counter that guy but they're gonna go for Ozo we haven't seen Ozo in so long he's actually so good in the current meta uh, because of all the healers that everyone picks up da, 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 he gets 33% extra healing from all sources except from uh, natural health regeneration and he's just so good with Lyra because Lyra does 500 burst heal that goes up to six, seven, 700 on a on Ozo, and he's really good into Scar Scarf. There's only one stun, so no one's going to stop um, Ozo from out of his acro bounce. But I would like to announce to anyone that is watching on Facebook, we're actually going to be ending the stream on Facebook, so you need to go over to mobcrush.com forward slash Tesseract, I think. Uh, I think that's the link. I'm not sure. And uh, so that Facebook stream will be ending. Yep, um, um, basically the link to the Mob Crush um, stream would be uh, mobcrush.com slash, I think it's forward slash, Tesseract Esports. So, mm. you know, he head on to Mob Crush and continue supporting your favorite teams, continue supporting, giving your support to Popeyes and Impunity um, just on Mob Crush. I mean, we will be continuing stream there because the Facebook stream has to end at this point in time. But anyways, as we are jumping into the falls, they are just going through the hero pickups at this point in time. Like, like you said, Ozo is a really strong pickup. Uh, he, um, Ozo is a really strong pickup, especially in the current meta. So, you know... Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry. Um, so, I, I was just kicked out of um, Hero Lobby, so... <laughs> I was starting to panic a little, so I thought it was just me, but if everyone is uh, getting kicked out, then it's fine. But anyways, we are restarting the blind picks. We are going into the game, game two, between Popeyes and Impunity. And like you said, Ozo will be a hard catch for the side of um, <coughs> Popeyes because Ozo has the ability to actually jump onto Aeon and Chingy. Although, you know, honestly, and... and with the amount of sustain coming up from Ozo alone, without that of Lyra, is already insane. And, you know... Almost as if Poison Shift is, is a mate for Ozo. So, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to how Ozo plays out in, in this um, game. And of course, um, how Death Q on this Idris will be able to bring back like that previous game. But walking through us this game, we will have the awesome, most gorgeous casters, Asurai and Riku. Take it away. Yes, finally. He calls me gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Luxuria. So here we are, guys. Possible last game of the day. And again, if you haven't uh, checked or rather haven't heard the announcement, we will be shifting our stream for the Southeast Asia Vainglory 8 Week 3 Split 1 Tournament to our Mob Crush website. Um, introduce them, Riku, while I actually try to find the website. Yes, sir, Popeyes at the blue side. We got Shingy and the Scarf. Ted's a boy on the grays and Aeon two 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 on the box. Yeah, and for our red team, it is going to be Impunity. We have Quarter Ball, Quarter Bois with the Lyra, Death Q on the Idris, and last but not least, Kerchops playing as the Ozo. So, guys, again, if you are watching right now, please tune in or transfer to our other stream link, which is mobcrushcom Tesseract Esports, and that's what we are. Uh, Gonna be continuing our, again, like I said, possible last game, game two of this best of three series for the finals in our week three uh, grand, or rather week three championship. Yes, sir. And we've noticed how the team composition of Impunity is something of a very persistent, sustained, long team fight. They can keep going and going with their own sustain plus with the Lyra and they've got a very good close gap skill whenever they try to become aggressive. We've seen it time and time again from quarter raw or, uh, or Lyra players in this tournament where they do an aggressive arcane passage plus bulwark and everybody just goes in 
and in your face or just focus on a single target and then move on to the next once that person falls down so level two everybody's lurking here in the jungle and just rotating uh it smartly as you know this could be the last game if impunity takes this away from popeyes and strangely enough i mean i haven't seen ozo ever yet but that three ring circus i think added with the poison shiv uh, i think it's gonna be the the combo here that's gonna be able to bring down the the I believe the yeah the grace that is as a voice to counter out the the heals and popeyes aeon Ooh, ouch. good damage from the chakra definitely they've got a lot of early damage uh from the side of impunity plus persistent damage, sustained damage, uh, after a while being a, being, allowing them to su to keep going as they get onto the chase, as there's not a lot of peel on the side of Popeye. So if they go dive, if Impunity dies, but look at, that, look at that, Scar is the first casualty of this game. He actually dives into his own goop as well. Talk about tragedy. Oh, yeah. You you are you're the one who uses a skill and you die inside your own skill. I mean, yeah, of course, it doesn't deal dam it doesn't deal any damage to you, but it just looks kind sad. of yeah, it sad. Looks sad. Exactly. So this is impunity strength right now. They can be uh, really aggressive. As again, we do know that Vox has a mobility skill, but then um, for the for the composition of of Popeyes, Ooh, wait, just for a minute. And the minute is over. Yes, yes, the minute is over. I mean, uh, impunity is the type of composition that can, just, can keep going and going, just be persistent, be annoying, and just um, just be in the faces of the carries of the side of Popeyes. Because I believe there's not there there is a ton of damage reduction. There is a ton of heal uh, coming from the Grace, but sadly, uh, in terms of CC wise, like. AOE control, perhaps, if you will, uh, reliable hard CC. There's nothing really that can you know, stop how persistent both Death Q and uh, and Kirchhoff is going to be, uh, especially once they reach their level six spikes. So for me, um, it's impunity just being persistent whenever they find these openings of aggression, and then it's just um, Popeyes trying to reposition and. Maybe wait for a mistake whenever they just uh, dive in. Well, we'll see. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's you know one of the strengths of a grace is you can catch multiple people off guard with your holy nova, and then if something goes a bit too awry, a bit too iffy, you will have that divine intervention just for the safety of it. Although Aeon two 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 will get engaged upon, and just a little bit of aero acro bounce coming out from the ozo, pop it onto the heads. I mean, come on! You're a, you're a, you're an acrobat. You're a you're a circus monkey. You're a circus monkey. Circus ape. Circus. Yeah, definitely a scary. Simian. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta have that bouncy feet. So just a little bit of tussle in the mid lane, or rather in the lane, from with impunity and Popeye. Yes, sir. As they have a decent amount of wave clear on their side. Um, yeah, it's pretty decent, but I gotta hand it, uh, the better wave clear is definitely on the side of um, Chingy and Aeon, uh, especially with those ranged carries. Um, meanwhile, it's just them, again, waiting for uh, an opening for Impunity as they just keep ramping up these experience and gold. Because I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's gonna be a bit hard to burst someone down as you as you saw when Ozo actually entered the fight, tried his damage a little bit on towards the grace. Uh, it's definitely not enough just yet, so they gotta be patient with this. And if they want to burst someone down, it's definitely either the scarf or the box. So au revoir, get a little bit of poke. I'm kind of interested to see how this interaction will fare out once the once Ozo has his ultimate, the Bangarang, to be able to. Just tumble into a target, stun him enough so that Death Q can actually go in for the kill or go in for an easy kill, so to speak. But that is kind of ways down the line if they have enough burst damage to work with. 
Yes, sir. We, they do have the sustain uh, from the Lyra to deal with the pull coming from Chingy and Aeon 222. So if ever they're in a pinch, they can just easily rely on Cordova for the, either the escape or the sustain that they need to keep rotating and keep being in the field to gather more experience and objectives around the jungle side. So Scarf definitely, does, definitely doesn't want to roam alone again like what happened earlier. Trying to make the steal. Good body blocking from Impunity, not giving the payout to Popeyes. They're looking to push onto this oh! turret, but there's an aggressive use on that arcane passage. And here comes Death Q. Doesn't use the Shimmer Strike just yet, so he has the ultimate for the safety as well. Although, look at that monkey get a little bit flambéed. You can see the hair is just being turned into crispy follicles by the scar. And yes, well, they try to defend Portavon, does have the heals. So they still got to be a bit careful if they choose to die. But look at that turret just go super low. Here comes Death Q from the sidelines. There's going to be an immediate heal onto the Grace. Divine Intervention is still actually up. And my goodness, Popeye can just keep on healing for days for the ball into the sidelines. Got to be a bit careful, but he will be able to drop down quite a bit of sustain for his teammates. They go for the one for one trade, and that's going to be Ozo to be shut down. Death Key from the sidelines. They could actually go in onto a 1v1, maybe 3 for 3 trade, but no, Chain has too much HP, or rather HP, and that'll be a 2 for 3 with a turret being taken by Popeyes. That was just a good setup uh, for Scarf. That was the perfect opportunity uh, for Shingy with the Dragon's Breath. Oh, wow. Painful. And again, this is Popeye's strength where at least they're a little bit, uh, they're more balanced compared to their all three damage composition. Well, at least now they've balanced it a little bit and had uh, and have the damage reduction, this shield, the shields, the heals to keep them alive into the fight. Tessa Boy just casually walking, bump into Cordova, bumping into Cordova. And and yeah, that's the, the problem on the side of uh, what do you call this? Of impunity because it's uh I mean they are the type to just be in your face, but then uh Popeyes just keep repositioning, so they just keep uh chasing without any sort of reward whatsoever. We already saw the aggressive play from the Lyra, where it was an arcane passage to a passage to a bulwark, but they weren't able to burst down a target enough uh, uh, soon. And then Teza Boy would just heal that back up with all the protections, with all the damage redux, plus the divine intervention. So imp impunity changes target, decides to go for the objective. Just give me a moment here as it looks like there's going to be a push by... I believe there's going to be impunity onto Popeyes, although the popping of the Divine Intervention keeps them alive for the meantime. The Scarf blows out the fires. And after all, after the dust has been cleared out, two kills onto impunity. Exactly. Vox and Scar. Let's just say um, we've heard from the analyst devs time and time again how you know they're going to be really scary during the later phases of the game. Vox and the Scar. But will you look at that? They've stolen a jungle camp away from Court. Oh no! Actually, hold the thought. No, she managed to secure the camp for herself. But at this point of the game, especially you've got two melee um, hero heroes on your side, it's just going to be really uh, problematic if Popeyes just keeps kiting and microwing their way out of the danger that uh, Idris and Ozo provides from the side of Impunity. So with Grace as their frontline, as their only peeler, I think it's uh, I think it's enough, especially that, you know, they're having a bit of a trouble just um, securing them as, you know, the, yeah, they're they're, they they're lacking have, damage. Yeah, they're lacking damage. Uh, also, I don't think they are capable of doing damage if they can't really stick to the targets um, consistently. Yeah. Plus, they're not really... They don't have a reliable CC that can hold them off uh, or finish one down if ever they manage to do catch someone out of position. So it's primarily impunity. Just have to work with a small... Time opening, frame, yeah? exactly. Time frame. Whenever they catch someone off guard, or else he or she is just gonna escape. 
True enough, they can't just willy-nilly go around the map and not look for economy because they have to stack up money here. There is at least a 2,000 gold lead by Popeyes, so they're in a comfortable spot. Gold Miner is right there, right for the taking three minutes before the Kraken spawns. And Impunity, they're on a little bit of a time frame here. Like you said, it's not a lot of window opportunity, and at the same time, once that big objective comes out, Popeye can go for it and maybe force out the Punity into an unfavorable matchup because they have to contest for that Kraken. And Quart of Bois here might get caught off guard. But no! Wait, hold that thought. Defu goes in for the backline. He spawned at the box. They're going to be going aggressive here in the dive all day long. Dive Schmibe. And that's going to be well, 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 Impunity to get the one shutdown. Although the Scarf is still heavily, rather, it's rather healthy. And he will get the one for one trade. They're still going aggressive onto the Grace. And this, well, Whoa. this Ozo almost able to get the shutdown, but the damage from the Scarf was enough to take him down to the grave, even though he had so much sustain to work with. The charging from the Grace, she's looking for a Holy Nova, but Court of Bois just, just has that mobility. Definitely. Wow, that was a really nice team fight from the side of. Uh, Popeye is here. I mean, they did manage. They did manage to eliminate the box, but the scarf again was the only one left. So they're going to be contesting the gold miner. Tessa Boy is in danger. And well, they didn't get the gold miner, but they mine kills here by impunity. So they're slowly getting these slight openings, and they're capitalizing pretty well on them. Yeah, I think it was a bit too greedy to uh, aim for more objectives. I Impunity just can easily punish that as the death timers are pretty much short uh, during this 13 or 14 minute mark. And as the game progresses, you know, one thing I noticed uh, after these team fights is that, yes, they do focus on the box. It takes them a while as Death Q actually just storms the Chingy. Man, he just goes balls deep into his opponent and will get punished for that one. I mean, that might have been a cheeky, actually was a cheeky setup. Arcane Passage by the Lyra giving a huge gap close for a de for Def Q. But you got to remember, there is that point wherein, well, Chingy is with his comrades. Exactly. That was just, I'm not a questionable play, but here comes the aggression not stopping yet from the side of Popeyes as Impunity just decides to defend as their fellow member Idris, Death Q responds with a quite a questionable play as, you know, uh, Impunity's composition is the type that is all in, but has no means of escape whatsoever, unless, you know, you go to the same side, uh, go back to the Arcane Passage where you came from, but then that's so easy for Popeyes to just uh, chase you down and follow through. So with the, with Aeon and, and Chingy as well, just ramping up in damage, ramping up in kills. I, I fear that perhaps uh, Impunity, despite with the sustained uh, kit that they have as a, as in the draft that they build, it might not be enough as, you know, they they need something a little more bursty because they have a, uh, they have a lot of damage reduction. They've got a lot of saves. The Divine Intervention uh, will just immediately, you know, kick in if they're not able to burst someone down. So it's something uh, that that Impunity will probably face uh, in the next uh, team fights that they encounter. There is a tension bow up already for Def Q, so he does have that damage, but I mean, he goes in too over aggressive. He should take into account that the Grace is there for the Divine Intervention, as well as that, uh, that I forgot what you call it, the first skill, um, Retribution? I oh, know, Benediction, Benediction, Benediction. yeah. Benediction. So still, they have to be wary of how how much protection the Grace can still give, and Def Q gotta calculate onto that onto that side. He goes in with the step shout step and goes aggressive. The Grace into the back line has to be very careful here for the meantime. And Def Q throws out a bit of a good chakram, hits in three members, but still, it's impunity playing a little bit footsie with their opponents, trying to gauge. If ever Popeye is, is not in that power point anymore, and they start to go in for the Kraken as the Grace backs onto base. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get this Kraken. Oh, they are, as it is just getting chipped oh, down no. so fast as Jeff Q just takes 
the Kraken with no response whatsoever. Grease just arrives. We'll see if they're gonna do a counterattack as they hesitate back and forth, whether if they're gonna engage or not. Kraken slowly going back to the lane, going to the lane rather, as they opt for a siege instead. Man, Grace back to base. That's a little bit of disgrace, although not really the correct communication from Popeyes. They allowed a basically a free Kraken, so it's going to be charging in onto the turret. It's going to be the offense as that <gasps> Kraken will go in to the damage from Death Q and he obliterates his opponent. That's going to be the one shutdown onto the Scarf. The backline damage dealer has been sh silenced for the meantime. Good amount of heal back onto this Actually, back onto the Ozo. I thought it was going to be Death Q chasing, but no. He actually helped the Kraken for the meantime. Breakdown turret. And if they get two, that's going to be such a worth Kraken. And even the possibility of a push into one of these Crystal turrets. Five more seconds before the Scarf responds. Exactly. They're pretty much healthy here as Tesla Boy enters the fight. And enters the fight indeed. They spawn out Death Q. And this should be a pretty fair fight for Popeye. They shut down two as well. But the damage has been done. Will this Kraken get the Crystal Turret? It's gonna be very close. One more shot. Yes, he and does. And he gets it. Yeah. All right. Wow. <laughs> that was a that was a good stall uh, from Impunity, just maximizing the power of the Kraken before he actually falls down to battle. So they immediately got uh, like two or or a kill there plus a Crystal Turret. So that's just one left till the vein is exposed. So uh, they might do the waiting game again, whereas they're just going to be farming up the jungle. No need to push the lane, just let them meet at the middle and just keep uh, waiting till another Kraken spawns. Use it as uh, to pressure Popeyes again for them to actually contest because I feel like Popeyes underestimated the damage uh, from the side of Impunity, assuming that. Perhaps they wouldn't be able to finish the Kraken in time and they will be able to get a do a clutch. So they had to, to suffer from that mistake. So Popeyes are just recovering from that. But then again, gold lead wise and kill wise is definitely on the side of Popeyes here. So with that said, Impunity just regaining their composure and Quarter Bra just trying. Uh, as you can see, they've changed their micro strategy where they didn't enter using a Arcane Passage Bulwark, they reserve that for other uh, situations, but look at Death Q waiting and he's, sneakily... He's on that point already where in... You said it that, you know, there's still advantage for Popeyes, but the thing is, Death Q has gone to that phase where an Idris can just blow someone up if they're able to surpass the Grace. And the other thing is, if the Grace cannot react in time with the intervention, <gasps> it just makes it so easy. Oh, I thought there was going to be an engage. Me too, because the Grace was a bit too far off from the rest of the carries uh, from uh, Popeyes. I thought that was the perfect opportunity, but then again, you know, it's a bit too risky as Impunity is just one game away from winning the championships as Kraken has spawned. This is Patient is oh, a virtue. Oh, it's going to be D Death Q. He's going to go for the cheeky plays. They're going to try to stop everybody from recalling and death Q with just death tank things <laughs> and check 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 and he will be able to break it down oh man there is only one word from this one and that is disgustingly <laughs> dirty he breaks it and that's gonna be a two. Oh my goodness <laughs> impunity such impure actions but still it's it's illegal it's legal. It's, it's legal, it's but it's a strategy. Oh it's my god! Well played by GG. GG. I mean, waiting for the Kraken to respawn to use that as a bait for Popeyes to to fear the Kraken take from Impunity, just disregarding the potential backdoor that they could do. So they were in the best.